After watching this video, you will know exactly how to fix this awful PowerPoint title to make it an attention magnet. Let's get started. Hello everyone, this is Alan BC from Better Slides That Online. This channel is all about helping you to create memorable PowerPoint presentations that deliver your message in a way your audience will never forget. And in today's video, we are going to talk about probably the most important part of your PowerPoint presentation, which is the title. And just in case you are wondering why is it so important, let me answer with the saying, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So, considering the title is the first slide your audience will see, if you want to capture their attention, you better take care of the first impression they get from your slideshow to make sure it's nothing but great. Now, to make great titles, we need to keep some useful concepts in mind when designing our PowerPoint presentation, and one of those is branding. As you probably know, most companies already have guidelines you are supposed to follow when making PowerPoint presentations. These guidelines contain everything from fonts you can use to the exact color palette, RGB codes included, to assure consistency across the board. So, if you are making a PowerPoint presentation for the company you work with, Ask your manager about these branding guidelines and how you can have access to them. This will save you a lot of time and will stop you from choosing colors, animations, fonts, or even layouts that don't follow these branding guidelines. But let's suppose for a second that you are a professor or student or an independent professional or that for some reason the company you work with gives you a certain level of freedom to design your presentations. In that case, there are some additional aspects I recommend you to take into consideration when designing your slides. Those are the KISS principle, you know, the famous keep it super simple rule, uh, the use of low profile animations, that by the way should be there for a purpose, you shouldn't add animations just for the sake of it, and the final aspect is design consistency. Now, there is a lot we can say about these three things, however, I think this is easier to understand with an example, so let's go straight to the slide I showed you at the very beginning of this video, and let's work on it to see what we can do. So, here we are. But before we start making any changes, there are a couple things I want to analyze with you. First is background. This green background comes from these designs you can find inside PowerPoint. I will not say using these designs is a complete mistake, there could be someone who finds this default designs useful for some reason, but I definitely think this is so generic. Uh, whenever I see a background like this in a presentation, I am 99% sure the presenter didn't put so much effort in the design of the presentation. Uh, and by the way, when I talked about putting effort, I don't mean making a super complex background, but more on that later. The next thing I want to bring to your attention is the animations on this slide. If I hit the spacebar here, you see some generic animations coming in. This text movement makes no sense here. There is no reason to introduce the title and subtitle in this way. Um, you remember a couple minutes ago when I said animations should serve a purpose? Well, this is a clear example of a useless animation and we are gonna talk about that also in a minute. By the way, before we continue, I have a playlist here on YouTube 100% dedicated to PowerPoint animations. Um, if you are interested, go to the link in the description below this video if you want to learn how to add animations that support your slideshow and help you deliver your message effectively. But well, enough talking for now, let's start doing. Um, here is the slide and let's begin working with the background. We want the background to be green. Uh, so let's keep that color, but we will apply the keep it super simple rule here and reduce the background to just one color. Yes, we are going to select one green from all the greens we have here uh, to use it as our background. As a rule of thumb, I recommend you to choose the darker color for your background because in this way you will be able to highlight words, uh, charts and other important elements in your presentation without the interference of a bright background. So, to choose our background color, we are going to click here on Format Background and here on Gradient Stops. As you can see, the darker color is this one on the right. So, let's click on it and open this drop down here just to know which screen is being used. As you can see, is this one over here. So, let's keep it in mind. 
Now we are going to duplicate our slide. Um, I always recommend you to work on duplicates so you can save your progress while having the original version available, just in case something goes wrong. So now that we have our new slide, let's click here on Hide Background Graphics. Um, we are doing this to delete these green shapes from our slide without affecting the original design. So let's check the Hide Background Graphics box. And as you can see now, we have only the color gradient on our new slide while the original slide remains the same. Uh, next step here on the field section, let's change the selection and choose solid fill. And on this color dropdown, let's select the darker green color we wanted for our background. Um, as you can see now, our slide is 100% green and simple, and we are halfway through. The next step is fixing the text. But before we continue, if you have found this content useful, please subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you get a notification every time I submit a new video. That being said, let's continue. Regarding the title and subtitle, we are going to make two important changes. Um, first, we will modify the position of the text in our slide. I've seen in my experience that aligning titles to the left works very well to make them look professional. So let's align the title and subtitle in this way. Uh, there we go. And now we just need to modify the animations. Just for you to remember, uh, let me click this icon to start the slideshow and hit the spacebar. These are the animations we currently have for our text. These are generic, ugly, useless animations that don't add any value to our presentation. Uh, in fact, I don't recommend you to add animations like this to introduce your titles, and the reason is simple. When you are in front of your audience, you simply won't have time to show them this introductory animations. You will be like, okay, let's get started with the presentation, so let me show you the introductory animations. Um, and everyone will be like, okay, so let's wait for the animations to finish to see if we can get it started. Now, don't get me wrong, I definitely think adding animations to your title may improve the quality of your presentation, but that would be the case only if you add what I call transition animations, but more on that later. By now, let's delete the generic animations uh, we have in place. To do that, we are going to highlight our text, go to the Animations menu, and open the Animation pane. As you can see, here we have a list of the animations for this slide. Here we are able to modify the triggers for our animations, as well as the order for the execution. But right now, what we need is to get rid of them. So let's hold Shift, click on each animation, and hit the delete button. Okay, looks good. Next step, we will add a rectangle next to our text. Like this. Perfect. Now let me change the color. I think this yellow works well. Yep. Okay, I don't want it to have any border. Okay, great. Now let me explain. I am adding this rectangle for two reasons. Mm, three, actually. Number one uh, is kind of decoration. This rectangle here um, is adding some style to our slide. Second reason is that this rectangle is showing our highlight color. Yes, this yellow color will be used to highlight whatever we consider important during our presentation. And the final reason is we will use this rectangle as a transition element. This rectangle will help us move on to the next slide easily. So let's take a look to our slide. Let me see. Yes, I like it. It looks organized, the text is clear, uh, the contrast between the text and the background is perfect, and this yellow rectangle works great. Um, let's compare this new slide with the slide we started with. Just let me skip the animations. Okay, you see? Old one, new one. Old one, and professional, too many colors, you don't know where to focus your attention. Um, new one, professional, simple, organized, and the full attention goes to the text, so now we are ready to move on. But before we do that, let me show you just one more thing we can do here. Uh, first, let me duplicate this second slide. 
and we're gonna make just one change. We will modify the background color. Um, I'm doing this just to show you that you can play with different colors to create a different effect or in case you want to give a different personality to your slide. So let's see. Um, I think this uh, blue color may be a good option. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like it. Um, let me know, what do you think? Let's go back to the original. Okay, original, second version, third version. Uh, to be honest, I like this blue color. If you like the green one, go for it. Or if you want to experiment with any other color, that's up to you. Just make sure that the contrast between the background and the elements in your presentation um, is good enough to make the text easy to read for your audience. Okay, so what's next? Now we need a way to move on to the next slide. And to do that, we need a transition. In this situation, most people use the default transitions offered inside PowerPoint, but I suggest to make things a little different. So, instead of doing this, or this, or this, what do you think if we do this? This is what I call a transition animation, and it's a good example of an animation serving a purpose. You remember when I said that all animations being added to your presentations should have a purpose? When you do transitions like this, you capture people's attention, while you make your presentation more entertaining and easy to follow for them. That is the purpose. Also, this is so different from the animation we saw at the very beginning, you remember? Useless. Useful. I know you see the value on this, and believe it or not, these animations are really easy to do. This is something that won't take much time to do, so you can use it in almost all your presentations. But I cannot explain everything about these animations in this video because it will make it very long, so I'll give you all the details in the next video over here. Click on it and make sure you watch it. And that's all for now, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I submit a new video. Take care and see you next time.